Well, we are back in Minnesota in the very snowy, Yay. cold weather. <laughs> it's good. It was good to be back home. I felt by the end of the week of our vacation last week, it was it was good to be home. But we do want to continue kind of what we started talking about last week about how our simple living has tied into our faith. And so we'll talk more about that coming up next. Good Sunday morning. I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom, joined by my sister, twin sister. I feel like we need to mention that every video because in Emily there's a comment like, are they twins? Yes, twin sister, um, which is very cool and we're blessed. Um, Everybody and, uh, should have a stunt double. I wish everyone could have a twin. Like, Lord, if, if we could ask you something in heaven, it's like, why can't all babies come in pairs? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Cause moms mom, are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's been cool. And so on Sunday mornings, we just enjoy taking a few minutes to share our faith and kind of share how it ties into our simple living. And so uh, we kind of started uh, last week, I didn't really even mean to talk about grocery shopping. Yeah. And I just mentioned that one of the things I've noticed we've started doing is just buying a week's worth of groceries. And for me not to feel like I need to stock up or if there's like a really good sale, I need to get extra because I started to feel like I was taking more than my share, I guess. And I shared that quote with you that to take more than we need is greed. And it's just something for me personally that I had been feeling convicted about and just kept ringing in the back of my mind. And so groceries was one area that we definitely noticed it. But it was fun to hear others of you say that you too have been experiencing the same thing. In fact, I love that one of you said that um, it's it almost feels good at the end of the week to have bare cabinets. Yeah, well, I mean, isn't it the worst feeling in the world when you open up your crisper drawer and you see the pile of vegetables vegetables that have gone bad mm -hmm. you know and it was like good intentions that you started the week with but you yeah you just feel bad and you kind of I don't know sometimes you even kind of sneak it into the garbage oh like, right I don't want like, to like don't let Tom see right yeah. okay I'm not <laughs> yeah. the only one you know and so yeah. that's what I've found too we we actually upgraded our refrigerator um and it it's newer but has less space I don't know. Yeah. And, and it has the drawer freezer in the bottom, which somehow that feels really inefficient. Mm -hmm. and so, but the good thing about that has been it just fits less. Okay. And so now when even when I'm grocery shopping and I'm tempted to stock up, I actually can't unless yeah. I go get a chest freezer and I'm just not ready for that step yeah. yet. You know, and so I've been naturally restricted, but that's what I found. Like, oh, yeah. we're actually eating everything. And even in the freezer, yeah. I don't know why freezer the concept has become that's where we like hoard just stash stuff <laughs> you're kind of looking at my freezer the same way as my fridge yeah you know and not keeping that stocked full of some time mm -hmm. foods so anyway that's been yeah. working well for it us. is amazing just the less inventory that we have to manage in every area of life it it really seems to simplify and i've even been taking it a step further i feel like i can share this with you like i wouldn't share this regularly is like i've been letting like us run out of ketchup and the kids are like we don't have ketchup like how do you eat chicken nuggets without ketchup and then but it was good because then they started liking barbecue sauce, but now we're actually out of ketchup and barbecue sauce. And I'm like, Ooh, mustard is or like <laughs> Maggie this morning, they're packing their lunches and it's, it's Friday when we're filming this. And so the groceries will come on Saturday or Sunday, but she's like, we have no food for our lunch. And I'm like, yes, like yeah. that's okay. Like we live in such abundance that yeah. I feel like I have to intentionally do these things for my kids to at least experience a little bit of lack sometimes, you know? Yeah. And in a way it's become kind of like our own form of fasting. I feel yeah. like, you know, like it's okay if you don't have the little cups of applesauce because it's Friday and they <laughs> ran out on Wednesday, you know? And so I don't know, it's, it's amazing how such a little thing has made it, like a big difference and we were talking about too having our groceries delivered yep. which could feel excessive like you know <laughs> but but really like we cook more now that somebody's bringing yep. our groceries to us and you were saying it's helping or you or i actually clean those vegetables in the crisper drawer like right because away. when they come home now i'm still fresh and mm -hmm. i have you know the energy to wash them and clean them and get them ready for the week whereas if i've gone to the grocery store done that whole thing come home unloaded them you know then usually i'm just shoving them in the fridge and hoping to get to it later which yeah. a lot of times doesn't happen and so i know again for each of us this is highly personal some people Absolutely. some people have more time and less yeah finances other people you know and so you just have to find you know what's working for you and I, I mean I've been amazed actually as again parenthood has kind of forced me on this journey I think that's a lot of our <laughs> how stories I found it too, yeah. yeah 
how actually it does tie into our spirituality because I was kind of a pastor and kind of a mom, you know, and now I'm finding like, oh, all of these worlds really intersect. And, and so one of the passages, that's what I was just looking for when you were talking, is this one in, uh, this is 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 8. It says, now there is great gain in godliness with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. Mm. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Now, that's strong language. Yeah. You know, most of us probably don't think of ourselves, you know, on the brink of ruin and destruction or, you know, falling into these different desires. But I think the first part of it is so key. And what I love about this, it's easy to like get down on Americans, right? Mm -hmm. And I know people are watching this from all over the world or, or Westerners or, or those who seem to have abundance. Yeah. You know, because Wealthy it's people. Yeah, there you go. And because yeah. it seems like, oh, you know, those are the ones who are always taking more. But what I love about this is, is Paul is writing to a Near Eastern culture that, you know, some of them were nomadic or, you know, by now he was in one of the cities, but they had, you know, modest homes. Uh, they would have had maybe just the clothes that they would have on their back. Uh, but he was still talking to them. So he um, wasn't talking to rich people? In no. This. Oh, <laughs> see, that's how I always read it. Or Americans, yeah. or Westerners. Or, yeah. No, he was, he was talking to the everyday person. And isn't that mm -hmm. amazing? No matter what your station of life, there can be this tendency toward finding contentment in things. So obviously it's a human condition, you mm -hmm. know, uh, that Jesus has redeemed. And Paul is just reminding them of the fact like, hey, now that you've been born again in Christ, this is where your contentment lies. It, it lies in, in your faith and in serving your, the Lord and in the kingdom. And I think the mindset that needs to be addressed when it comes to this is what we can often think is, okay, if I give away my stuff, or Dawn was talking about living almost a lifestyle of fasting, you know, that that means that I'm just going to be bored alone and without anything, like sitting alone yeah. in my empty house in the dark. I don't know. Or, yeah. or but that's going to be lacking. depressed. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, but what I love about this is, is what Paul is trying to help people understand is, is this is actually the way to life. Like you are going to find such fullness of life in the kingdom and you're going to find more fullness in your relationships. You're going to find such joy. Something is going to come alive in you when you're serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then, and there's, there's nothing else that's hindering or there's nothing else that's stealing your focus. Yeah. And so I think that's the invitation is, is today to just kind of look at those mindsets and be like, Oh, is there something that's telling me I'm going to feel deprived or I'm going to feel yeah. depressed or I'm, you know, if I don't have as many things in my home, if I don't have as many groceries in my cupboard and I think what's so fun is I think so many of you are have already experienced I mean at least if if we're friends that as you start to get rid of things in your house that we get tastes of this right and I think we have to keep that in mind to keep propelling us forward because sometimes when we look at the big picture in our whole house or you know things we get overwhelmed but I think this idea of like oh lord you're like you're gonna meet me every step of the way yeah. and you're gonna guide me through this process and like there's gonna be so many fun like surprises and rewards along the way and so i hope if you're maybe just getting started on this journey that like keep going because yeah. it's so encouraging and i love when you share those of you that are further in the joint journey i love when you share comments about like how good things are getting because it truly does inspire yeah. others so thank you for sharing those testimonies as well so I'll just read this again. It says, now there is great gain in godliness with contentment. So it's godliness, which would be just pursuing the things of the Lord and then contentment, choosing to be just satisfied where you're at. For we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. So that's an eternal perspective, right? We're just kind of taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture here. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. And so Father, I thank you for most of us we have food and clothing, Lord God. We're so grateful. We're so grateful, Lord God, that, that you are so faithful to provide for our needs. And even those who are experiencing lack right now, Lord Jesus, I ask that you would bless them. I ask that you would show yourself as a good father who's meeting every need, who's with them every step of the way. Lord God, and, and for whatever area of life where we may be experiencing lack, Lord God, help us to turn toward you and to look to you to provide for those needs. 
So we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this message, Lord God. Thank you for helping us to address mindsets that are stealing contentment from us, Lord God. Thank you for grace to continue in this journey. And so we just bless each of us now in Jesus' name. Amen.